well, obviously one of the concerns is um, the, one of the things that the Congressional Oversight Panel looked at was the financial crisis that we we went through. Um, that's what the, the TARP, the Trouble Less Early Program funds were designed to do, was to pull the country, to stop the financial crisis from occurring and, and to pull the country out of, of the financial crisis. Um, one of the concerns about the ongoing debt crisis is that it could cause us to go back into it and have another financial crisis. I mean, obviously, uh, while the economy is doing better than it was, and, and I, we, we do not seem to be in, in a financial crisis, part of the problem in the financial crisis was the credit markets froze. Um, and there was a lot, a great deal of uncertainty, and banks weren't lending to each other, and they weren't lending to businesses, and, and that was causing significant problems in the economy. While I think the financial sector is, is more stable now than it was in, it's in the end of 2008, without question, and the beginning of 2009, um, it's not as stable as it was, say, five, ten years ago. Um, and the problems that could arise from the U.S. defaulting could cause the banks to have uh, start having problems again and, and credit freezing again, which would significantly hurt the economy in the, in the current given the current situation. There is money coming to the federal government every day, um, and it's just that our expenditures, interest expenditures, along with other commitments, um, exceed the amount that co is coming in, which is, which is why we need to continue to borrow. Um, so the government could choose to not to repay some of their other financial obligations. Um, they have obligations to, you know, workers. They promise to pay them their salaries. Um, they have obligations to uh, people who are receiving Social Security payment, uh, Medicare, Medicaid, um, and, and when I say workers, that also includes members of the military. Um, so they have a lot of people that they've promised to pay. They can choose to stop paying those people or postpone paying those people. Uh, formally, is that a default? Well, I mean, I think technically, if you're not meeting, paying your obligations, then, then you're in default. Probably different than failing to pay um, people who have hold treasury bonds that, that we promised to pay. So um, from an individual standpoint, uh, how does it affect us individually? Um, if the government goes into default, I mean, obviously, when you have borrowed money and then you're unable to pay it back, the next time you go to borrow money, people will charge you a higher interest rate because you're viewed as a greater risk. Um, and so the interest on government um, bonds presumably would go up, um, which makes it more expensive to pay back. We borrow a lot of money. Um, if we have to pay a higher interest rate, then we have to make higher interest payments on those loans, which just exacerbates the, the debt problem, which is part of what we're trying to fix. So in some sense, going into default makes it worse because any payments we make on those on those bonds are going to be we have to just simply pay a greater amount of money to borrow money. If interest rates get pushed up for the for the um, for the United States, you know, the U.S. government, interest rates for other individuals will be pushed higher too. So mortgage rates will go potentially go up. Um, the rates that uh, um, businesses pay, so commercial commercial businesses, um, Ford, for a major presence in in the U.S., borrows a lot of money every day. They float commercial paper. If the interest rates go up, it's going to be more expensive for Ford to borrow money, um, and uh, and that affects that will affect Ford's ability to, to expand employment, to produce more cars, um, and since Ford's a major employer in in Kentucky, that has significant impact on, on employment in Kentucky. But then all businesses are possibly going to face higher interest rate payments, which would slow down. I think any that's one of the reasons that we think that this could potentially cause. Uh, a recession to occur. Congress authorized the executive branch to spend money previously. Previous Congress has authorized the, the executive branch to, to spend money, which the executive branch did then do, um, made commitments and, and borrowed money to, to make commitments. Um, now this current Congress is coming along and saying, wait, you know, while I, we know the f previous um, uh, Congress has authorized the executive branch to spend money. We've decided now we really didn't want them to spend that money in the first place, so we're not going to pay it back. That's essentially like going on vacation, you and your partner going on vacation together, charging the vacation on your credit card, coming back, sitting down and saying, you know, maybe we really shouldn't have gone on that vacation, and then calling the credit card company and saying, you know, in retrospect, we shouldn't have spent the money, so we're not going to pay it back. And the credit card company's not going to let you get away with that. Politicians in Washington have decided to, to, to tie um, a cut in overall government spending to raising the debt. Now, there's no reason for them to do that. They're doing this in some sense to force them to act. 
The bigger problem is the, the deficit that the federal government is running. Uh, for some reason they feel they need the threat of not raising the debt to force them to, to, do, to address the more fundamental problem of overall government spending. Um, they can raise the debt limit um, and then turn to addressing this more, very much more intractable, more difficult, more long-term problem. Uh, I think it's fairly clear that uh, they need to do both, raise the debt limit and address the fundamental issues of government uh, spending.